It's not only about the bragging rights. It's about representation, prowess, flexibility and adequate information for a solution-focused initiative. We crowned a champion in the third edition of the Speak and Solve initiative, SASI. It was a tough challenge, but an ultimate winner emerged. Taking the trophy, which has been in the custody of the Harare Institute of Technology, the Midland State University held the cup for the first time, marking themselves as the team to beat in the fourth edition of the SASI debate. They fought a good fight. Will they follow in the footsteps of their predecessors and be the winners this year? Do they have what it takes to take it home yet again? Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Taurai Sengare. I'm the Dean of Students at Chino University of Technology. My expectations are that um, the debate will be fruitful like any other past um, debates that um, is full of quiz and questions that debate the sexual reproductive health of students and along the way impacting or informing the students about uh, uh, their rights in terms of uh, sexual reproductive health and the way how they should access the services uh, literally, I expect that the, both the participants or the whole debate will reflect on empowerment of students on sexual and reproductive health. Uh, we are grateful. Uh, those who participate, they come up with um, a, a, like a, a knowledge a database of um, sexual and reproductive health issues that affect students and also uh, the, the, the solutions or the way how the students should be able to uh, assist themselves or negotiate for safe provisions. So the, 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 the debates are very, very informative. They give information and they empower and, uh, you know, they make students assertive. Yes, indeed, a, a, a serious impact for that matter because um, uh, now the student body or population understands that uh, sexual reproductive health uh, is an issue that really needs uh, to be addressed so that students get access to services pertaining to sexual reproductive health. They also assist students to 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 know where to rush to when they are in a, in a problem and also empowering those students. Goi and Shine guys, um, we first and foremost won a trophy. If we don't get a trophy, that's excellent still because the bottom line is to participate. Uh, our message is go ye and participate. Once upon a time, somebody was last in the race, but he continued until he reached the touchline. After all other members have reached, the answer was, I have been sent by my institution to participate. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, my dear students, as dean of students, uh, we love you. We value your life. Uh, where possible, please get vaccinated. Um, if you, you are tested and found um, to be positive, please follow the quarantine rules and observe the uh, COVID-19 rule regulations, sanitize, mask up, social distance. The university, yes, we are the cut up of the rest. We are proud of ourselves. Uh, we really value particularly the involvement of stakeholders in assisting us to raise uh, a holistic uh, student.
My name is Nadia Mutisi. I am a second year law student at the University of Zimbabwe. My name is Ebenezer Kudita from the University of Zimbabwe. I am very excited to be part of the 2021 SASI debate competition. I think last year we came so close but this year we are more than confident and ready that we are bringing the trophy home this year. I think we've come so close so many times and every other time that we came so close we went back and we got the trophy so definitely University of Zimbabwe is coming to conquer in 2021. Uh, my message is very clear that this year things are going to be different. This year they will see a team that they've never seen before and they are most definitely going to lose this year. Our final teams in the semi-final stage are ready. <laughs> but I have even better news for them. Not only are they battling for the list that I just announced, there have been additions to the winners' lists. Lucky bunch. I wish I was a debater in university. All right, so the winner now takes away the trophy for their university, the coveted trophy, waiting for their name on that fourth little piece of metal. All right, um, students each get a laptop each, um, gold medals, um, electronic sanitizer dispenser for their university, and MiFi router for the university as well. Second place, students each get a tablet, silver medals, electronic dispenser for the university, as well as MiFi router for the university. Third place, students each get a cell phone, bronze medal, um, then the uh, electronic dispenser for the university, as well as MiFi router for the university. Um, now, the addition as well, maybe this will encourage you. Didn't encourage the last bunch, they didn't know, but it'll encourage you. So, best speaker male, gets a 15-inch laptop, best fe speaker female gets a 15-inch laptop, um, best rebuttals um, each get a tablet. Are you feeling encouraged, inspired? Inspired to argue yourselves to nothing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we have the University of Zimbabwe and you know, University of Technology taking each other on. And your motion is the house believes that um, this house believes that tertiary institutions should continue with primarily online education post-COVID-19. I'm going to read that again. Uh, this house believes that tertiary institutions should continue with primarily online education post-COVID-19. Now, University of Zimbabwe, you are affirmative. Confirm? Confirm? Okay. And Kat, you are opposers. Confirm? Yes. yes. <laughs> it is so obvious. Yes. Yes, yes, very eager to be opposing this. All right, now, just going through the motions of our time once again so that you remember. University of Zimbabwe, you have uh, three minutes to give us your opening speech. Once your opening speech is done, Kat will have one minute to cross-examine you. Once Kat is done cross-examining you, Kat, you will have three minutes to give us your opening statement and University of Zimbabwe will have one minute to cross-examine you. When we're done with that, we will come back to cut for the rebuttal. That is a three-minute process. Then we will hand it over to University of Zimbabwe for another three minutes. Once that is done, we will come to our opposing, our opposer's closing remarks. Cut, that's you. You get two minutes on the clock to give us your closing remarks. University of Zimbabwe, you will round off this round with your closing um, remarks, and that is another two minutes on the clock. Are we clear on our time? Please let me remind you that whenever it is your turn to speak, turn the microphone towards you and switch the button on, all right, before you start speaking, um, both of you. And then during your cross-examination point, you may both, both teams, you may have your microphones on so you can respond to each other in good time. Are we clear on everything that's going? Yes. All right. University of Zimbabwe, are you good with your opening? Yes. All right. Your clock starts now. Problem in Zimbabwe about waiting until the perfect moment. Many people thought that Zimbabwe was not ready to work online, and successfully, many companies have managed to work online for the past two years. It shows me two things. One, Zimbabwe is very, uh, very, very um, jittery when it comes to taking on new innovations. And number two, Zimbabwe has the potential to adapt and move on and be relevant in the world. How does this affect the debate? The debate is about online learning and that tertiary institutions should primarily learn online. By primarily, what do we mean? 
We're not saying that if we adopt this policy, it means that tomorrow everyone is going home and we're starting learning online. It means, number one, the main focus and goal of the university will be towards channeling and geared towards working online. Like it does not happen all of us all of a sudden it will take space is like five years or ten year phase, but it's in terms of strategy number one. Number two, it means that the objective and the ethos of the of this institution changes in the channel towards online. What do I mean? It means with immediate effect, we're talking about a situation whereby any 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 type of program or learning that can be done online is done online with immediate effect and everything else is followed towards gearing and setting up structures in order for those things to happen. We think this is how we define primary. We think anyone who then assumes that this just happens tomorrow overnight will be very, very ridiculous, right? Secondly, why do we want to achieve this? We are currently going under as a world what we call the fourth industrial revolution. By this I mean that we live in a world where everything is becoming digitalized, our markets are becoming digitalized, our companies are becoming digitalized. The five biggest companies in the world are digital companies. It means that Zimbabwe in terms of staying ahead, in terms of becoming relevant in terms of a global market needs to come up with policy strategies that allow our citizens of the world, allow, allow our students and young people to become citizens. How, the, how then does this policy do so? What we then encourage by doing so is that number one, it allows innovation in the economy, right? It means that every time there's a demand, there will always be supply, meaning that companies, once they know that students now need to learn online, they will create measures in place that will allow students to do so. But also there are a lot of advantages for students, number one. It means that there are institute, uh, students who, who won't, have, won't have to travel long distances for schooling purposes, they won't have to spend long hours in Zubco queues and bus queues, that time can be otherwise used efficiently for other things. It also means that people who are not necessarily student age, but people who are going to work, our uh, parents at home are able to do to go to school and attend and get education that they need and also allowed to do some more minimal things. But also we need to understand that most of the institutions are still young and growing, meaning that their capacity is very low. You have a Nickel and State University that just opened recently that is, they can't accept a lot of people because of infrastructure struggles. Meaning that there are many people in Manikale who can't go to university in their local state because of infrastructure. But what online learning does is that it allows people who, when there's no infrastructure but there are structures in place that allow you to learn online without having to go physically attend lectures. Not to mention that we're living in a post-COVID uh, environment where a lot of things are happening in terms of health, in terms of the media future, health-wise, a lot of things are being held back because of the COVID-19 situation. But also, we need to have a, a conversation in terms of how does this affect not just Zimbabwe, but the global economy. The moment people start learning online, it means that you are allowing people to think outside the box. It's innovative thinking. That does not just happen, translate to terms of education, that translates into the broader world in terms of solving ideas and coming up with full necessities, the mother for inventions. Thank you very much. Eba, you and your old sleeves getting along. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'd, I did realize you were. Hmm. All right. Um, okay. Are we ready for cross examination? Yes. Are both our microphones on? Yes. Okay. The clock starts now. Mr. Speaker, sir, please account for the fact that geographical differences are not accounted for by e learning. Uh, means, uh, explain what you mean. Like, Geographical distances are accounted for by e-learning because it means that people don't have to be physically at a place so that they can learn. So they are in fact dealt with when it comes to e-learning. Mr. Speaker say, is everyone digitalized? No, no, no. The, I, I knew you were going to run that argument, the predictable argument. We're not saying that Zimbabwe is in a point where we're ready, but we're saying number one, do we have the potential to do so? Does the fact that we're not ready mean that we shouldn't try to innovate because we wait for the perfect moment? Perfect moments don't exist. We need to forge a path and make sure that we force innovation upon like necessity is the mother of all inventions. Mr. Speaker, say, are you aware that the government has been able to subsidize transport for students to be ferried from local to tertiary institutions? Yeah, that's exactly my point. If they are able to subsidize transportation, it means that they can, they can just substitute the subsidies for transport into subsidizing e-learning for students. The goal here is innovation. Time. Okay. At least you got that across. Yeah. The goal here is innovation. We heard that. All right. Are you ready with your opening, our opposers? Yes. Your clock starts now. Number one, practice makes perfect. I didn't say that. Number two, experience is the best teacher. And they say, save the best for the last. And tertiary education is the last. And therefore, for best, we need the experience. Tell me, and I forget. Show me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I May learn, ladies and gentlemen, you see, the IM is not a rigid subject. It is a dynamic self-constitution whereby the other person becomes a mirror of my subjectivity. What am I saying? I am, it is because of you. You see, there is 
the least student in the class and this also the best student in the class. When they come together in the same class, studying the same subject, they can help each other to achieve what they want to achieve, which is a degree with a better past, ladies and gentlemen. Now they are coming here to say we should mainly use online learning. But then I have to ask for those who go to work, as an, an example, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have attended and how many of the Zoom meetings have you actually set for while list? Uh, you, you're actually muting the audio. Food for, food for thought. Ladies and gentlemen, if you may allow me to call you off the jury, my client is from Marumpupa. The father is a minor, he's got a laptop and a phone, but in Marumpupa, there is no internet connection. Now, if we are to make online classes the main way of our students to learn, how is this client going to get uh, his proper and quality education? We are here to advocate for quality education, ladies and gentlemen, not just quality, as we advocate for the sustainable development goal number four, ladies and gentlemen, not just that, these guys have the right to free education, which we are advocating for. They have the right to this quality education, so says the uh, sustainable development goals, ladies and gentlemen, and therefore, whether they, are, they, they, whether they are technologically advanced, they do on the laptop or the cell phone, their geographical location, yes, with the internet connection, they deserve to have this quality education, which we are saying past COVID, which is the reason why we're actually having these uh, online classes. The issue of skills, ladies and gentlemen, knowledge is accompanied with skills. The issue of uh, uh, life skills, talk of the programs you have to with, with say what, ladies and gentlemen, we are no longer having them the way we used to have them because of these online classes. And if you have registered uh, for exams, it's my university, you know, University of Technology. The university is of technology, ladies and gentlemen. Most of the, of, of the uh, lectures and uh, modules that we have are practical, which need uh, more attention. And then decentralization, ladies and gentlemen, we can also decentralize these universities like what Zoe is doing. Like every university in Mashingo, in Chinoy. Time. What did you say you were studying? Environmental science and technology. You have this affinity for philosophy. Then also you have this, you like clients, you know, you should be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of clients, you know. Okay. Are you ready with your cross-examination? All right. Your clock starts now. All right. Mr. Speaker, are you aware that we're living in times where we have the advent of the fourth industrial revolution? Yes, and I, I'm aware, and I am aware that there is someone else who is not advantage to experience that or to live in that. Okay, do you not believe then that our education should be fostering people to then enter into the future instead of staying in the past? Sorry, do you not get your question? Do you then not agree that people should be looking at getting into the future instead of staying in the past? Yes, in the past is the post-COVID era, which is using the online classes, so we should go back to what we are used to. Okay. Um, can people not connect online to be able to help with each other, like in, in WhatsApp groups and all of that stuff? They can connect, but not the same way they can connect when they are doing face-to-face. -face. All right, do you not believe that demand forces there to be a supply? As in, where people want something, then there's going to be a supply of that particular thing. Uh, now we are talking of students, and maybe the demand are not those who are benefiting from the classes. All right, and then when it comes to women with children, how then can they access education if they cannot go to school properly? Time. All right. Opposers, your rebuttal. Are you ready? Yes. She's smiling. She's happy. She's excited. She can't wait to go. All right. Your clock starts now. This house cares for the welfare of the society. This house cares that no one is left behind. Everyone is included, ladies and gentlemen. That means from the least income, medium income, even the high income, ladies and gentlemen. What are we saying that? What happens when COVID is managed and contained? Now, yes, the old, the, the dead, Yes, there are farmers came here and said that they are talking about the future, but if COVID is managed and contained now, what happens now, ladies and gentlemen? And that is where we are basing our debate. We need to understand that when we are looking at this motion, the issue is centered around three A's, accountability, affordability, and availability, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are saying, now look at this. They said, 
they mentioned long queues, but I think that the government has been able to curb that. They subsidize transport, as a job, but there's of course that ferry students from their areas of residence to, uni to university, ladies and gentlemen. So that is not an issue that is relevant enough to be raised in this debate. Moving on, they say that e-learning was successful, ladies and gentlemen, that is a lie. Actually, it came about with devastating effects, ladies and gentlemen. Talk about the geographical differences in terms of network. Some students actually miss their lectures. Some students miss their mock examination. Some students, even according to current statistics, the numbers that registered for exams decreased, ladies and gentlemen, because of online learning. So it was a failure. Zimbabwe is not yet ready for this. The issue is around resources as well. Let, so instead of centralizing education to one mode, let us improve it. Let us supplement online education with face-to-face -face lectures, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on into our own debate, we are saying that we are saying that let us not limit the education system to one model, yes, because we want to include all students so that we will be able to fulfill sustainable development, sustainable development goal number four. Moving on, we are also saying that face-to-face -face lectures are crucial. This allows for students to do research and development in equal spaces. They can hold seminars, combine different forms of learning, including writing, reading, projects, even demonstration and practice. We are saying that according to research, completion of teacher-led classes is almost five times higher than that of online learning, ladies and gentlemen. Hence, let us supplement online learning. Let us not make it the sole model in the education system. Now moving on, ladies and gentlemen, we are also saying that life skills and rehabilitation is crucial in these centers. These services are found when we are doing physical learning, when students are moving around, getting to express their right to social security, ladies and gentlemen. That is when they can get the uh, paramount village to access the services and this advantage would then be maximized. Um, also, let's talk about a conducive environment. Back at home, our students would have to do multitasking. They would have to balance school with homework, with home tasks. What are we thinking when it comes to that? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, with two seconds to spare, and I really was, I really worry about you sometimes. You get so <laughs> into it and so emotional. I feel like you're going to cry. I've got tissue here if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm playing with you. All right. Are you ready with your rebuttal? Your clock starts now. There are two kinds of people. Those who actually get the job done and those who come with excuses, like these guys. So panel, they tell you that no one must be left behind. And yet they're advocating for a whole nation to be left behind. Ebenezer has come and told you that we're in the fourth industrial revolution. We are looking at the digital world. Everybody is getting into the future. And then they come and tell you, no one must be left behind. And they say, let's still use paper. Let's meet face to face. It doesn't matter what America is doing. It doesn't matter if we're behind because no one must be left behind. You think that there's a philosophical inconsistency in them saying no one must be left behind and then choosing for their country to actually be left behind, right? They talk of subsidies and they say, oh, the government has subsidized transport. That means the government can do it. If the government can subsidize transport, that means that they have the money to be able to subsidize innovation. That means that the problems that they're raising themselves Themselves, they actually have given us a solution to it that the government actually has money to be able to subsidize for those things. Where we say that there's going to be online learning, they therefore do not need to subsidize transport for the students, just give us the money so that we get into online learning so that people can then not be, be left behind. We think that we're, we're framing an era, in, we're framing a new era of virtual worlds. We're allowing our children, our students, to be able to become global world citizens. We are looking at, a, 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 we are looking at a situation whereby you're going to become redundant if you don't know how to use the internet. You're going to become redundant if you cannot work on the internet because that's exactly where the world is going. I think that is highly unfair of them. It's not reasonable in this particular situation to then say that we're, we're then going to just focus on getting into the past and all of those things. Part of me told that Zimbabwe wants to be an upper middle class economy by the year 2013. What does that look like? We think that it looks like women being able to be educated. These are the same women that they're saying that, oh, they have so many chores to do, they have children to take care of, and all of that stuff. Ebenezer yeah, comes and he tells you that infrastructure is going to be catered for in this particular thing, right? Where well, you cannot go to, to to use it because there are so many students. Now, because it's online, there are going to be a lot of students that can then enroll into these particular institutions. This means that the pe people, women who have children and cannot actually go to school, are able to get educated. We think that we can best, uh, 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 we are best able to afford or to get to the upper middle class economy by 2030 through our means and through our procedures. We can't maybe tell you, panel, um, that that when it comes to having a demand for a certain thing, right, where a lot of people are saying that we need the internet, we need all of these things, companies such as Econet are in a better place or in a better position to be able to, to actually supply that particular thing. They came and they said rightly and very poetically and philosophically that pro pra practice makes perfect. We think that when they say that um, internet or online learning has not been working in the past and all of that th and, and all of that stuff, we think that as long as we get to practice it, as long as we, we get to put that in, in, in place, we'll get to a point where it's actually perfect. We tell you, panel, that when an eagle wants its child to fly, it doesn't say, oh, walk, 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 fly, 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 
you know, it throws the baby into the sky and that baby knows how to, how to fly. And Belinda tells you that there's no such thing as a perfect time for anything to be done and therefore we must get into it right away. Panel will tell you that no one must be left behind. In this case, African nations, third world nations must not be left behind, especially in cases of the fourth industrial revolution. If we play catch up or if we say we, we must stop to try and accommodate every single person, we might not be able to get to where we want to get to. Panel will tell you that we advocate for girls, girls that are not going to be able to go to school because maybe they're on their menses or not that. If they can do that at home in their beds and all of that, we tell you that they're going to be capacitated. Time. Thank you. Do you speak, as, do you type as quickly as you speak? Yeah, even faster. Wow. <laughs> Teach me, oh master. All right, are you ready with your closing? Yes. Okay, your clock starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, if I may call you off the jury, we have put in place a solution which is decentralization if it is a matter of a traveling the distance to the university. And we are not saying that we should totally shun the online classes, but the debate is saying primarily, we are saying what should be primary is the face-to-face -face lectures. We've managed to identify the problem that we are having and actually say it out some of the experiences of those children who are in those locations, which you know that network and uh, internet connection is maybe a 2G, then someone does not even have the resources to attend the online classes. We've brought in the issue of human rights and actually explained, which they did not comment on, how their online classes discriminate those who cannot afford. As they say, they are small universities and the bigger universities accommodate everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Those who cannot even afford to pay them who go there through scholarships, ladies and gentlemen. And to afford these people, we need to uh, conduct face-to-face -face lectures uh, uh, as the, the primary method to, to, to learning, ladies and gentlemen. Talk of students on attachment. Are they even practicing this online learning? Or they're actually going to the companies to practice what they are studying, attachment. So if we are to primarily focus on online classes, should students on attachment really learn how to uh, do the safety health uh, and environment impact assessment while at least on their laptops and phones? How about those who are studying medicine, ladies and gentlemen? The skills that they need to learn. Time. All right, are you ready for your closing? Yes. Your clock starts now. <clears throat> At the end of the day, panel, we need to ask ourselves an important question. Where does the future hold? And which team best represents the future? They talk about how like, we need to prepare, how, like how they're going to work on attachment. Many companies are starting to work online. Econet has got an entire division recently that is working primarily online, and many companies are adopting this policy. Are we saying that we need to our need we need to make sure that the students that we are grooming in these universities are prepared to meet the world that they are heading into? Understand that these children are not going. Are we not going? To, we're not going to start living in 2020. We're going to start being active in the year 2030, being active in the year 2040. When we're now in our mid age and in the prime of our life. And if we're not prepared to be part of the global world, we will be left behind. We will be left out by the market. And the Zimbabwe as a whole will be left out. But also, they talk about the people in the remote areas. What are we doing? For, why? How does this benefit the people in the remote areas? People in the remote areas need to come to. The, uh, let's say, for example, the learners use it. They need to number one find transport money to come to use it. They need to find number one. number three also find money for accommodation and pay rentals. Anyone who stays in Narara will tell you that rentals in Narara are ridiculous, $70 a month. And these are people who are poor, come from poor areas. It's much cheaper for them rather than use the money for rent, to use the money to invest into getting laptops, invest into Wi-Fi. Those are better, those money better spent for them personally and as entire family. But also we talk about demand and supply that Nadia talks about. Each and every instance whereby there's a demand in a market, there will always be supply. Once this thing becomes a policy, it, you, you will note that in, um, electrification of raw areas becomes much quicker. Econet and the likes are better able, better suited to, to, to set up base stations there because they know that there are people in those areas who need these networks. As, current, as things stand right now, the people, they don't need it, which is why they don't exist. Whenever there's demand, there's always a plan. But also we think that the future, in terms of creating global citizens, how the advantages, in, we live in a country in Zimbabwe where the economy is hard, where people need to do things on the side. People are at work and also need to do it inside. Our lecturers also need to do things on the side so that they can make ends meet, even our students. 
the, when there's online learning, it means they are flexible and they can time. do other things. Thank you. It is officially crunch time. After this, we know who makes it to the finals. One of our adjudicators just did this. <laughs> because he knows it's not an easy task picking the final two and ultimately the final winner. Now, remember that the Speak and Solve initiative debate competition for 2021 is proudly brought to you by Say What? With support from the Swedish Embassy, UNFPA, SAHI, the National AIDS Council and Econet. Who's taking it home? Whew, only time will tell. Hi guys, my name is Jadel. Hi guys, my name is Maya. Child abuse must come to your store. If you have been abused, call the same white call center number 577 if in case of abuse. Call center, mommy, oh. Oh, no.